New Orleans Mardi Gras is more than just a celebration before the Christian season of Lent begins. In this city, preparations for the big day begin weeks and even months in advance. Early mornings are nothing new for bakers, but the pre-dawn workload grows during carnival season. From January 6th through Fat Tuesday, New Orleans Cake Cafe and Bakery is a beehive of activity, where they make as many as 50 king cakes a day. Here, they make non-traditional goat cheese and apple stuffed cakes. There's very old school king cakes in New Orleans. They've been at it for 50, 60, 100 years, some of them, and they have a loyal following. The old school king cake has a tiny baby or other trinket baked inside. And whoever gets the trinket has obligations, such as buying next year's king cake. Here, the baby goes on the outside. The king cake is a traditional New Orleans Mardi Gras pastry. You'll find pastries like this all over the country and all over the world that they're only served for a certain season during the year. In another part of town, Sally Hedrick and her son are making 150 or more ornate costumes. These are for the social organizations throwing the lavish balls and parades. Some may go for more than $3,000. It's as rewarding to see the women in these costumes gleam, but it's more rewarding to see the men because a man doesn't get to dress up um, in beautiful clothes. He's usually in a tuxedo. Hedrick works on costumes year round, refurbishing ones that took a bit of a beating during last year's Mardi Gras celebrations and creating new works. For a look back at years past, the Louisiana State Museum lets visitors see more than a century and a half of New Orleans Mardi Gras traditions. The oldest item in the Carnival collection is something that we were very fortunate to acquire just a couple of years ago. It's a ball invitation that dates to the 1850s. The Carnival exhibit at the museum on Jackson Square only shows the tip of the iceberg. However, the museum's warehouse periodically offers tours, where visitors can see the thousands of costumes and other items. The way that we celebrate Mardi Gras now and for the last 150 years revolves around what we call the crew system. There are all these clubs that exist that are called Mardi Gras Crews. All hail the king! For the dozens of crews, spelled with a K, lavish balls highlight Mardi Gras. The Knights of Sparta crew was founded in 1951. For the last 30 years, they paraded in the city and currently host a masquerade ball and parade that falls on the next to the last weekend of carnival season. The crew's captain does not publicly reveal his identity. He says it isn't about secrecy. I wear the mask, however, because it is the tradition of carnival to mask, to hide one's identity, because when I represent my carnival crew, the Knights of Sparta, I am simply the captain. One should not know my name or who I am. Belonging to or leading a crew takes a big commitment. It is very costly to the members of the organization, paying dues, buying the trinkets, the throws as we call them, to throw off the floats, ball gowns for the ladies, uh, tickets to uh, different functions. And we do it because of a sense of tradition. As Fat Tuesday approaches, Warehouses throughout the city come to life. Float dens, as they are called, house the floats that can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to construct. It can take a month or more to build and decorate the elaborate floats, some of which date back to the early 1900s. It's part of the economy here, too. It puts a lot of people to work. I mean, you know, to make a float like this, you need carpenters, you, you need artists, you, you need welders, you need tire people. You need mechanics, so it's a lot involved. And a final vital ingredient for Mardi Gras is the music. Grammy-winning artist Irvin Mayfield. From television, you see these parades go by, people throwing beads. But what you really don't see is that Mardi Gras lives out in people's houses, it lives out on the streets, it lives out in the halls, in the parties, in the receptions. And it's not a thing over one day. Um, so I would say in terms of music, you know, it's very hard to have Mardi Gras without the music. 
and he says any musician growing up in New Orleans is shaped by Mardi Gras. You're a, a leg on a table that helps the table stand up, the music, the food, the people. For a young musician, you wouldn't start playing music because of Mardi Gras necessarily, but if you are a musician, you will be involved in Mardi Gras a certain way. Most New Orleans natives say anyone hoping to understand Mardi Gras needs to come back often and stay a while, not just for one day. <laughs>